Welcome back to UFC Breakdown. I'm here with Dan Hardy as we look forward to UFC Fight Night Berlin on June the 20th. Now, this is the part of the show we call Fight Focus, where we're going to concentrate on where the fights are going to be won or lost. Dan, let's start with the co-main event of the night. The two veterans at the game, it's Sibber versus Karajiri. How is this one going to match up? Well, veterans are the right way to use. Both of these guys have had so many fights, so instead of me delving into their whole back catalogue and pulling out little clips, what I've done is I've built, basically built an ideal fight, a typical ultimate fight for both guys. So if their game plans go as they've laid them out, this is how Dennis Sivers fight should go. So the first thing I want to talk about is Dennis Sivers' background, and he's got a, a strong judo background and a sambo background. So in the clinch, he's very strong, very smothering but most of his fights are contested on the feet. He wants to kickbox with people. When you move into him, he likes to stand his ground and throw tight punches. He's also got a whole plethora of kicks that he can use as well. And one thing you've got to watch out for, if you charge over him too fast, he's going to level change and put you on your back. Now, this is where Siva gets quite difficult to move because obviously you can see he's, he's quite a muscular guy. If, you, if he gets you in top position, you're really going to struggle to move him. He's good at cranking and clamping down on his opponent and just turning around them. Look at that beautiful uh, arm triangle choke that he's using against Charles Rosa there. Even though the technique's not quite right, Charles Rosa was almost close to tapping there. Unfortunately, he didn't get this, this submission, but watch this. As soon as Charles Rosa escapes this, he starts throwing submissions one after another. And this is why it's important uh, for Siva to have such good um, submission defense because Kawajiri, where he's a submission machine. He's very, very quick fire. He throws them constantly. And in this scramble, Charles Rosa throws up three or four different submissions. And Dennis Siver, he's good at getting out of the position, finding a situation where he can land some heavy strikes. And if he finds himself in too much danger, he's just going to bail out. This is really where Dennis Siver uh, thrives. Now look at that perfect back kick just there. Charles Rosa acknowledged it, and then the knee that follows puts him on the floor. So Dennis Siver, you really don't want to be contending with him on the feet. If Kawajiri's going to win this, he's got to close the distance down. You would have thought, though, with Kawajiri having so much experience, in fact, they're both very experienced, Kawajiri's not going to make that mistake because he's going to make sure he gets him down and gets him down and keeps him there. Well, yes. The only thing that I'm going to say about Kawajiri is his eagerness to chase the takedown. So let's have a quick look at Kawajiri. The first thing that's going to stand out to you is, is his unorthodox striking. Now, it's not that he's uncomfortable on the feet, but he doesn't have the same kind of option that Dennis Siver does. But what he does have he really invests in the spinning techniques, the leg kicks, but as soon as he starts chasing for a takedown, that's where he's dangerous. He can close the distance, he can get a good lock on, and even if he doesn't finish the takedown, he can hold you in the clinch and work some really nice trips. Now, when it hits the floor, this is when he starts to get excited because Kawajiri likes to create chaos. He likes to create scrambles, he likes to get his opponents rolling and moving, and then he starts to catch you in that scramble when you're, you're, you're so focused on everything else that's happening that you're not going to catch these little mistakes that you're making where you're you know, potentially leaving an arm out or something for Kawajiri to catch. Beautiful takedown there against uh, Clay Guida and a fantastic uh, guillotine attempt here as well. You can see the tight uh, squeeze that he's got on uh, Clay Guida's neck there. Kawajiri needs to close this distance against Dennis Siva. He doesn't really want to be going strength for strength with him. He wants to be catching him in these scrambles. And if he can get into a top position like this and rain some heavy shots down, Siva might end up exposing himself and offering up a rear naked choke like this one against Sean Soriano. Beautiful technique there. Slides the arm under the neck, tightens it really, really slowly. And then Sean Soriano, as he's about to tap, he falls asleep. Yeah. He's got a great squeeze and his nickname is The Crusher. So if he gets a hold of your neck, you know he's going to squeeze it. And one quick thing as well, I mean, he hasn't fought for over a year because of a bad eye injury. Will that affect him going into the fight? It's a good question. Some people it does affect, but with Karajiri being a veteran of so many fights, he's been around for so long, I'm sure he's come up against this situation in the past. OK, enough talk. It's time for you to get your kit off. <laughs> no, I actually mean it, because this is the part of the show we call On The Mat. OK, this is the bit where I'm glad Dan has got a training partner in, Dean, and I get to stay safely outside the octagon. But, Dan, we're going to look at some of the techniques these guys are going to use come Berlin. Well, Dennis Siver, it's all about his movement, and that's really what I want to focus on, because it sets up his attack and his defence. So I'm going to mimic Dennis Siver's movement here. As, as he does naturally anyway in his fights, Dennis Siver's quite tight, quite tucked up, and he's high on his toes, so he's moving a lot. And this is important, because Kawajiri's going to chase that takedown. So if I'm on my toes and Dean starts to chase forward, you can see the advantage that it gives me in movement every time Dean shoots and attacks. He can always be circling and changing his angle. And 
and working punches as he comes in because Denis Siva likes to tuck up. He blocks with his arms and if he feels comfortable, that's when he can land his tight hooking punches as well. If he's got space, he's going to work his kicks. His spinning back kick is probably the most devastating weapon that he has. So, in this situation, if I'm going to throw my back kick to Dean, I have to move my front foot. Now, if I'm in a fight and I'm standing still and I move that foot, that's telegraphed to Dean. He's going to spot that and he's going to move and I'm going to miss. Obviously, that's not ideal. Not only does he miss the kick, but it also exposes his back to a guy that's going to jump on him and try and choke him. So with that in mind, if he stays bouncing on his toes, he can disguise that in his movement. He can step across and fire that back kick in in a split second. And that's because the footwork has allowed him to set it up. So not only is it important for his takedown defense, it's also important to land those devastating kicks. Okay, so we're going to switch it. Now I'm going to play Tatsuya Kawajiri, and Dean's going to play Dennis Siva. And the one thing I want to talk about with Kawajiri is the fact that he chases the takedown so much, often leaving himself exposed. And we really don't want to see that in this fight because Dennis Siva is just too dangerous. So if he charges forward recklessly, he's going to get hurt. So what I want to do, and I know he has the skills to do this, I want to get him to draw Dennis Siva in. If I do Kawajiri and stand quite low and long, I'm going to lead with a jab that's going to fall short, but then Dean, as soon as he steps in, I'm going to level change underneath. This allows me to do half of the work that I would do if I was chasing the takedown. Because a lot of the time, you'll see Kawajiri, he's got quite a low, long stance, and he'll lead with his jab, but then he'll chase with his arms out, and he's always going to miss his opponent that. You, you'll see it time and time again. He may even get a hand on them, but they already know what's coming by that point, so they can start to defend. If Kawajiri can be patient and wait back here, as that punch comes in from Dennis Siva, if I level change, I'm already on his hips. I can get a good lock here, and he's done half of the work for me. Even if I shoot and grab and Dean starts to sprawl as I drive, I can still get him to the fence. So as you can see from this position, he's driven his opponent to the fence and he can start working all kinds of takedowns and trips and throws from that position. And it's a much safer entry than just charging forward and reaching. And that's really something he's got to bear in mind. If he's going to work for that takedown, he's got to make sure he's safe as he's doing it. Great stuff, guys. Amazing to see those techniques up close and personal. Time for a quick break now, but when we return, it's time to break down the big one. The striking power of Yuani and Jacek goes up against the grappling prowess of Jessica Penny, who will ultimately be crowned champion of the strawweight division. And Swedish sensation Alexander Gustafsson joins us in the studio to talk about Fight Night Berlin and his upcoming title shot.